you math-minded maniacs out there, it's time for another super cool episode of Math Homer Coppers. Stick around. We'll be right back. With a little help from your friends here on TV. Math homework helpers, it's time, time. More math homework helpers, oh yeah. Math homework helpers, it's time, time. More math homework helpers, oh yeah. And welcome everyone to Math Homework Helpers. This is a show where we get to help you with your math homework and give you prizes just for calling in. With us today, we have two amazing teachers from Parkville High School. We have the one and only Miss Hevel. And from Honeygo Elementary School, we have the super sweet Mr. Cook. Thanks for the great introduction, Max. Uh Although I can't say I've ever heard you call me sweet before. Ah, well, that's because you now apparently work with honey, but you're right. so busy with or that you can only work with said honey on the go. No, no Max, I, I think you're a little confused. I am now at Honey, honey Go, but it, I work at a place called Honey Go. Ah, yes, right, got it, Honey Go. Exactly, Honey Go. Yes, okay, I got it. Just uh, one more question. Where right. do you have to go, and why are you calling me Honey? You, you, you know what, I think it's time I step in and okay, get this show you. started. Oh, Hello, okay. students at home. If this is your first time watching, you should know that we have prizes. All you have to do is call into the show with a math question, and then you will have the chance to win one of our four very cool prizes from our math homework helpers, Puck to Prick a Prize Wall. Well, that sounds sweet, honey. Mr. Mr. Cook, do you know what the prizes are for I today? I do. I'm going to show you. Check these out, guys. This week's prizes, we have a water bottle. Nice. We have a tangle puzzle. Cool beans. We have a fidget spinner, and we have a flashlight. Awesome. That should shed some light on things, huh, Mr. Uh, it Cook? Would. Ah. Oh, my goodness. That, that must have just, like, that just brightens my day. I ran out all my there. material. All right, I ran out of it. Anyway. And don't forget, after we help our callers with their math problem, we'll drop the puck on the puck to pick a prize wall, and the caller will win whatever prize the puck lands on. Yeah, that's awesome. That does sound pretty awesome. Let's get things started. Let's get it rolling. Let's go to the phones. The number to call is 410-494-1459. Again, that number is 410-494-1459. Max, who yes. is the first caller of the day? Well, it just so happens it's one of my favorite buddies. It's Mamie from Wellwood. Mamie. Mamie, are you there? Yeah. How you doing? Good. How's your year going? Good. Wait a minute. Last time I talked to you, you were in third grade. That means you must be, wait, carry the seven, drop the three. You're in fourth grade now. Yep. Woo! -hoo! Man. Fourth grader. All right, Mamie. So what's your question? Now, you probably have some hard math for us. Fourth uh -huh. grade math is tough stuff. Um, you may draw a number line, or you may use place values to round the numbers to the million, thousands place. To the thousands place? Mm-hmm. Okay, so tell us our number that we need a round to. 38,492. 492? 92. 92. Does that look right? Yep. Awesome. Perfect. And we're rounding to the thousands place. Do you know which number is in the thousands place? 8,000? Yeah, the 8, because this is Very my good. ones, tens, hundreds, and thousands place. Perfect. And did your teacher teach you a little rhyme to know when you should round? No. No. Well, oh, do you have one? I have a rhyme. <gasps> so if I'm rounding to the thousands place, I'm going to look at the hundreds place. And what I was taught when I was in elementary school was that if it's a five or above, give it a shove. If it's a four or below, let it go. Oh. So the number that I circled is a four or below, so we're just going to let it go. Oh, let it go. So let when, it, oh wait. So when I let it go, those just turn into zeros. Oh. And so, Mamie, you were asked to represent it on a, possibly on a number line. Is that right? Yes. All right. So. Oh, how do we do that? 
So what numbers do you want to put on your number line, Mamie? Mm. What is below 38,492? 8,492. So here's my 38,492. What number is going to go uh, below that? 8,000. Yeah, 38,000. And what number is going to go above that? 48,000. I'm actually going to go one higher than that 8 to 39,000. And which one is your number closer to, 38,000 or 39,000? 38,000? Yeah, perfect. There you go. So our number's not going to be in the center. It's going to be a little bit closer to the 38,000. I like how you perfect. did that. It's a good visual representation, Mamie. Awesome. Yeah. So does that help you out, Mamie? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like it. The number line does help a lot. Yeah. Especially for us visual learners, it's good to see. All righty. You know what else I like to see? What do you like to see? I like to see the Piper Baker Prize Ball. Me too. Mr. Cook, do it to it. Here it goes. Woo! We're going to send out the water bottle to you, Mamie. H2O. Thank Very you. cool. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much for calling in, Mamie. You're welcome. Have a great day and enjoy that fourth grade and call back next week. Okay. All right. See you, kiddo. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, I love starting off on a strong note. That was awesome. That was great. You guys want to do more or you just want to get into our Parcheesi game? Aww. We have Parcheesi in the back? Darn right we do. Oh, absolutely. Oh, I think I want to do more math first. Oh, yeah. Oh, too. She said, right. She's in charge. She's yeah, that's a good idea. All right. So let's see. Uh, Aya, are you there? Yeah. Hey, yeah. how's Norwood going? Good. Awesome. So you got a cool math problem for us? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Tell All us right, what it is. You want to take this one, Mr. Cook? I will. That'd be awesome. Um, Hi, Aya. Kira had 48 balloons. Jack, Jake gave her 33 more. How many balloons does Kira have now? Use equations, pictures, and models to show your work. Okay, did I write these, did I copy those down correctly? Uh, Aya, was it 48 balloons? Yeah. And yeah, the other friend had 33 more, is that correct? Yes. All right, fantastic. Yeah, Mr. Cook, though, balloons has two L's in it. Huh? I'm just telling Mr. Cook, he's got to make sure he has two L's in the word balloons there. Two L's and two O's, yes, I believe. Yes, no, but there's two, there's supposed to be two L's. Two L's, correct. Yes, that's two, what I said, there's two, two L's. There needs to be two L's, Mr. Two Cook. L's, two L's. Yes, very good. Thank you for listening. You're welcome. Anyway, I was listening to Aya as well. Oh, sorry. And Aya, I believe, used a keyword, more. And what, were, what operation, Aya, is the word more going to signify? Is that going to be addition or subtraction? Addition. Addition, fantastic. Nice. So I'm going to put my addition sign right over here on the left. And I'm going to make sure that I line up my place value. Uh, what two digits am I going to start with, Aya? What, two? What two digits? Am I going to add eight and three first, or am I going to add four and three first? Am um, I going to add the ones place or the tens place first? The tens place? So we read from left to right. You're absolutely right. But we're actually going to start on the right side and add up eight and three first. So we always want to do the ones place first. So okay. that's why I wanted to ask you, just in case we want to clear up that misconception, because okay. we always want to add, we want to add the 8 and the 3, and then we're going to do something if it's greater than 10. Let's see if it is. What's 8 plus 3, Aya? Uh, Eleven. Perfect. So I can't fit 11 in one place value, because I can only represent that in the ones place. What do I need to do in order to represent the one on the next place value? Wake up, Max. I need you with me. I'm awake. Okay, just making sure. Um. What can we do if we put one from the, the ones place of the 11 in the ones place, then where do we put the 10? Um. Can we just. We're going to do something called regrouping. Ethan, guess what? I'm the next column. Yeah, perfect. You're going to put it on the next column. You're going to put it on the next column. You're exactly right. And that next column is called the tens place. You don't have to answer. Say, say that one more time, Aya. Um. 
I think she was just saying what you were saying. Perfect. So if we have our tens place taken care of, let's add these up here. We have one plus four plus three. Aya, can you do that for us? Can you do that, buddy? What's one plus four? Five. And then what's five plus three? Eight. Eight you is three. It. Good job, Aya. So we have 81. So what was going to be my uh, label for that if we were working with, what were those things that we were working with before? We have 81 what? Um, 81 balloons. You got it. There it is. Two L's, Mr. Cook. Two L's, no, two no. O's. I believe I got it. Mr. Balloons Cook, it's two. full of hot air, just like somebody I know. Two L's, Mr. Cook. Two L's. Two L's. Two L's. All right, well, we're anyway. done with the end, are you? It's time for us to drop the puck on the puck to pick your pass well. Miss Hevel, take it away. I'm ready. <laughs> oh. On the left side. Oh. Oh. We got the lovely fidget spinner. Every right. teacher's favorite. Very cool. Teachers love them. <laughs> awesome, Aya. We are going to send that right out to you. Thanks so much for calling in, kiddo. Call back next week, okay? Thanks, bye, Aya. Bye. All right, bye bye. Oh, man. Two for two, guys. I like that was pretty questions. awesome. Just remember, next time we have a caller with the word balloons, it's two L's, Mr. Two Cole. L's. I will remember. Two I promise two I'm not a good speller. Yeah, oh, yeah. Two, two L's, too. Two L's, two yeah. L's. All but of them. But two L's. You're a loon, I tell okay. you. Anyway. What? Uh-huh. What? Uh -huh. what? Oh, oh, wait. Oh, oh we it's Jeremiah caller. from Sandalwood. How you doing, buddy? Good. Perfect. <laughs> ah. How's it going, Jeremiah? Very good. Do you have a math question for us today, Jeremiah? Is that a math question? Do yeah. you have one for us? Yeah. So, I got... Let me go see my homework real quick. All right. Look, take a look at the... Yeah, we gotta, get, we gotta take a look at the homework. Yep. Always important. While Absolutely. we wait, I shall do my wonderful dance. Go ahead. What's Call of Duty? What's Call of Duty? What was that? I missed that. I was dancing. I was dancing too, <laughs> so I didn't hear it. <laughs> Woo! Fluffy. All right, Jeremiah, what is it? Did you say hello? So my, so my math question for today is 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 60. 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 60. That's yep. a lot of pluses. Well, no, it's called duty. No, it's a tire. Well, sounds like there's a party going on over there. Sounds like Jeremiah's having a couple people over. Well, let's yeah. see if we can help Jeremiah out. All Jer right. So we got 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 60. Wow. Hmm. So How what's do we want to do that? Do? do we want to line it up like you did last time? We can, or we could always add, um, I was just wondering if there was a way to represent the repeated addition oh. in a different. It's not really repeated addition, but I'm doing distributive property. So it would be 45, I mean, 4 times 5 plus 4 times 5 plus 4 times 5. OK. Okay. So you want to represent the 20 as 4 times oh. 5. Wow. That's taking this up a notch. I like and it. And guess what? Shut up, Hezekiah! And ignore whatever Hezekiah says. And how do you want to rewrite the 60? Yep. How do you want to do that? We've got 4 times 5 for the 20s, but what about the 60? Oh, uh, we could do 30 plus 30. Okay, and how can I rewrite 30 plus 30? It's 30 oh, times. It would be. What's up, guys? My name is Herzl. So, are we just trying to rewrite that as multiplication? Is that yep. all we need to do? Mm -hmm. So, you just had to write. My name is Hezekiah. He's, a, he's, a, he's in middle school and he's bad. Okay. So. Is this all we had to rewrite, Jeremiah? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're right. So we, did we, were we able to answer it for it? Mm-hmm. All right, so Perfect. why don't we Let's drop, drop that prize. puck? Let's do drop it. Puck. I'm just looking at it. That's a lot of out to Jeremiah. It's an interesting way to do it. Sandalwood. And oh, we're going to send you the puzzle, Jeremiah. It is indeed. Very cool. Very oh. puzzling. All right. Very fashionable. All right, Jeremiah. Thanks for calling in, buddy. Thanks, Jeremiah. All right, let's move on. Our next caller is Amber. Oh, Amber from Norwood. Amber, are you there? Yeah. How you doing? Hi, Amber. Amber, what grade are you in? Third. Oh, do you like third grade? No, not that much. I like second grade better. Oh, you like yeah. the, well, you know what, though? It's still early in the year. 
You gotta get used to it. Sometimes it's, tough. it's like wearing in the shoe. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You'll get there. So what's your problem? We can help you make it better already. What do you have for us? I have review what you learned in second grade before out before out the new unit. Carrie went to the store with thirty five dollars. She spent twenty five twenty four on groceries. How much money does she have left over? All right. So. She went to the store, she started with 35 and she spent 24. Um, what operation are we going to use to go along with the keyword spent? Um, I'm not sure actually. Okay, that's a good, I'm glad that you called in to ask then. That's awesome. So uh, if I took $35 to the store and, and you spent 24, are you gaining that money or are you taking that money away to spend for something? I'm taking it away. Perfect. Perfect. Very nice. I love it. So if that's being taken away, the word spent, what operation could we use to represent spent? Minus. Perfect. Minus. Or what's another way to say it? Addition? Not addition. The... Subtraction. Subtraction. There you go. It. So uh, I have $35. You said I'm going to subtract. Uh, what's going to be in my equation then? Can you read it out to me? 34, 35 minus 24. Perfect. Do you think it's important to line up these place values like that? Um, yeah, I guess. Yeah, you're going to have to because if we can't, if we don't, we want to make sure that uh, the five that's in the ones place and the four that's in the ones place, we want to be able to get our answer, our difference, line it up perfectly. So yeah. what's five minus four? Five minus four is one. Perfect. You got Good. it? I don't have to uh, regroup or borrow from the three, so I can continue. Uh, three minus two? Uh, three minus two is one. It's also one. Fantastic. And so you went with $35. You spent $24. How much money do you have left? Uh, okay, so... What did we get when we took 35 minus 24? We got 11. And there you $11. go. Oh. And you can represent it with $11 left. Yep. There you go. Does that make sense, Amber? Yes. Perfect. Very good. Make sure you write down the equation that you have and show it to your teacher tomorrow. Make sure you also write down that you had $11 left, okay? Yep. All right. Hey, Mr. Thanks, Cook, I have, a quest I have a question about this. What do you, what's your question, sir? So when we talk about money, do we need to include the decimal point or only if there's change? Um, that's a great question. What do you think, Max? Can you help me out? I have no idea. That's why I'm asking you the question. Oh, I thought this was a setup. This was oh, a no. no. For okay, once, it's actually right, well, not a setup. I'm just curious. I guess you could do it either way, right? You could, really. If you have $11, you are welcome to represent with a decimal point, with, but you want to always represent it with two decimal places. Right. To be able to go all the way into the hundreds place. That makes to represent sense. Represent the change because oh. that doesn't. Does that make sense? That makes sense, but yeah. only if there's sense to be had. All right, let's change it up anyway. Let's head over here to the. Uh, I thought that was Let's get Amber a prize. Yeah, pipe big prize. Here we go, Amber. I coined that term, by the way. Oh my oh, goodness, that's and fantastic. And she gets a and flashlight. The flashlight. flashlight. All right. Awesome. Very cool, Amber. We're gonna send that flashlight right to you. Thanks so much for calling in. Thanks, Amber. All right, guys, you ready for another caller? Of yes, course. We, are. we got so. Brendan from Franklin Elementary School. Brendan, oh, are you there? A fifth grade question. Oh, Ooh. goodness. Brendan? I don't know if I can handle fifth grade. Yes. How's it going? Sure. Good. Very cool, man. What's up, Brendan? So, yeah, fifth grade, this is the big stuff. It is. Oh, boy. So, what do you got for us? Is it going to be some crazy hard question? Um, is it okay that I have two problems? Yeah, sure. Two? Yeah, we got time for two. What? Okay. Well, there's one problem. Yeah, there's one problem. <laughs> Take care of that one. <laughs> Let's fix that first problem. Okay, Brandon, go um, ahead. Tell us the first problem, buddy. Um, 45.3 equals 3D. 40? So, oh. Does that look right? Yeah. Okay, Perfect. keep going, bud. Was your variable a B or a, or a G? A G. Oh, a G. Okay. Ooh. There's the eraser. Two L's in balloon, Mr. Cook. And two O's, you're right. Yes. All right. One G and G. That's correct. There you go. <laughs> so, Brendan, what are we trying to do here? Um, I think that we're trying to divide to get 
our variable. Perfect. Good. I love that you used the word variable for yeah. our letter. Using That's the vocabulary. Awesome. So let's divide 45 divided by three. And did your math teacher tell you something? Whatever you do to one side of the equal sign, you have to do to the other. So that's why I had to get rid of that. Wait a Brandon. minute, why did you put the three on the bottom and not the 45.3? Because we're trying to get rid of that three. I want to get rid of the three next to the G so oh. the G gets all by itself. Oh, that makes sense. Brandon, how did you know that you were multiplying? Um, when you have a G, I mean, when you have a variable, after a number, it means that you multiply. Good. Perfect. That's wow. the default operation when you have a coefficient like that. Good I job. think Brandon could work on this show. I, oh, I wasn't. I'm just a guest. Huh? Huh? Who are you? Who are you? Oh, boy. Oh, just kidding. All right, here we go. <laughs> All right, so let's divide 45.3, or 45 and 3 tenths divided by 3. So how do we divide this? What are we going to do first? So... You're going to um, figure out how many threes go into four. Perfect. And how many threes go into four? One. One. So let's take those three away. And what am I left with? One. One. And now what do I have to do? You're going to bring down the five. Perfect. Now it's 15. And you're going to figure out how many threes can go into 15. Perfect. And how many threes go into 15? Five. Five. All right. Brandon's fast. And three times five is 15. Oh, so now what do I do? I got nothing left. And But then you're going to bring down the three. Good. The decimal, and then three goes into three one time. So one's going to be your decimal. So okay. The answer is going to be 15.1. Perfect. What did I forget to write there? I didn't put my decimal point. Oh, yeah. But you said it. 15.1 or 15 and one tenth. So that is G. Well, G, what do you know? Well, G. Does that make sense to you, Brendan? Yes. Yeah, it makes sense to me. So you Good said job, you had Brandon. a second question, right? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Mr. Tell Cook, us what do that you want to take the second question? I think I can take on this All one right. real fast. Uh, Brendan, real fast, before you move on to that next question, what could you possibly do in order to make sure that you were correct? Now that you know what um, the value is for G. Or you could, you could tell him if he's right. Multiply 15.1 times 3. And yeah. if you get 45.3, that means you're right. That's you're exactly wow. right. amazing. So once Perfect. you know the answer to, to G, you sort of plug it in. Plug it in for G. Plug it in. For the original equation, equation. And 3 times 15 is 45. And 1 tenth times 3 is 3 tenths. So you know you're right. Good hey, job. Hey, that's awesome. Let's go to our next, next question, bud. What do you got? Yeah, what do you got? Okay. So 13 and 2700. Equals a plus sign and a minus sign, 24.45. All right, start back at the beginning for me. 13 what? In 2700, equals a plus sign and then there's a minus sign, then 24 and 4500. And what, and what hundreds, plus and minus? 24 and 4,500. 24 and 4,500. Okay. Is that a two? It's a two. There we go. It is a weird looking two. Yeah, it's like those two L's. Oh my goodness, you're not going to let that go. <laughs> well, if you let the balloons go, they just go up. Yeah. So, uh, is there anything else that was asked on your homework? It just says 13 and 2,700 equals plus or minus 24 and 4,500s, so that's all your... Uh, Add both. Oh wait, I think that the plus sign is a variable of t. Okay, oh. Oh, equals got t it. minus uh, 24.5. Oh, okay. So, Bam, there it is. You uh, got it. <laughs> so what I like to do, I like to write my t almost uh, like a cursive t a little bit so that uh, I don't get it confused because I get confused easily, ask Max. Yeah, that's true. And um, T yeah. minus 24 and 45 hundredths. T minus 24.45 seconds. Equals, uh, I did it again, 13 and 27 hundredths. Does that look, because we can always flip flop what's on either side of the equal sign. Oh, I love flip flops, very comfortable. They are. And so um, because we're subtracting, what is our inverse operation? of subtraction. 
Addition. Addition, fantastic. So in order to get t by itself, we need to do we need to add something to both sides so that we can get the value for t. What do you think we're going to add to both sides to get the value for t? 24 and 4,500 plus 13 and 2,700. OK. So on this side, I'm going to add 24 and 45 hundredths. And you said in order to stay balanced, I'm also going to do the, the same thing on the left side. Uh -huh. And so when I have t plus 24 and 45 hundredths minus 24 and 45 hundredths, what happens to the 24 and 45 hundredths on the left side? Um. If I have some, if I have the number and I take away the same number, I think I'm left with zero. Yeah, just like our three in the last problem with three g. Remember that three went away, so our g could be oh, yeah. by itself. It was right. We had three over three for one g. In this case, we have twenty-four and forty-five hundredths minus twenty-four and forty-five hundredths, leaving with just my variable. <gasps> We got it by itself. We got it by itself, which is what we were, that's our first step, but we still have the last step on the right side. Right, Brendan, we need to actually solve the right side in order to figure out what our value is for t. So, um, whenever I do anything with decimals, I, that before I do anything, I always like to put the decimal either down or wherever it needs to go in my answer line. And let's take it one place value, place value at a time. Seven plus five. What do you have as seven plus five, Brendan? Well. Perfect. I have my two in my hundredths place. I have a one that goes up to the tenths. One plus two plus four. Eleven. Seven. Nice. Perfect. Nothing to regroup. I already have my decimal. Three plus four. Seven. Seven again. And one plus two. What's in the tenths? One plus two. What's in our tens? Brendan, three. up three, you got it. Perfect. So, 37 and 72 hundredths, what does that actually mean? What does that actually equal? That means that um, 37 and 72 hundredths, if you subtracted 13 and 27 hundredths, that you would get um, 24 and 45 hundredths, so that means that t equals 37.72. Perfect. Very nice. And let's keep it, keep it equal by saying 37 and 72 what? Hundreds. There it is. Hundreds. You got it. Very good. Good job, Brendan. Awesome job. That's wow. a lot. That's, that's algebra in fifth grade. That's pretty awesome. That, is, that awesome. is awesome. That's really cool. Hello. Hello. He seems excited too. All, all right, right Brendan. Well, we got two problems done for yeah. you. That probably all I had to do for homework. There you go. But we're not done with Brendan yet. It's time to drop the puck on the puck to the surprise wall. Here we go, Ms. Hebel. Oh, that's a good drop. Oh, oh Ooh, we got another puzzle. Nice. All right, we are going to send that puzzle out to you, Brendan. Thanks so much for your wonderful questions. They were really good. Hello. And call again next week. Are right, you guys ready for another? Oh, I am ready for another. I always we ready. have a special caller. We do. Wait a minute. I think Mr. Cook needs to take this one. Oh, it's Kara oh. from Honeygo a... Elementary School. Kara, what's going on? Do you teach Kara from Honeygo? I Honey do Go? teach Kara. Oh, oh, right. well, then this one is all yours. She's the uh, unfortunate soul. Oh. I'm the lucky one. She is not, unfortunately. Kara, how's it going? Hi. So do you like, do you, does Mr. Cook teach you? Yeah. Does he teach you math? Uh-huh. Awesome. Well, here he is. And Hi, if you Kara. have a math pr uh, problem, he could probably help you here, too. We, we have our test tomorrow, don't we, Kara? Yeah. Oh, boy. Okay. What's the test on? It's all of Unit 1. Everything that he that the young man earlier was just talking about. Right. That's going to be part of it. And we have all kinds of stuff. Wow. All kinds of decimal things. Well, Kara, what can we do to help you do a great job on your test tomorrow? What's your question? Um, well, I have a word problem. Okay, word up. The, the florist decides to also order sunflowers. There are nine sunflowers per, per bunch, and they cost $11.25 per bunch. If she orders sunflowers and orchids, what is the smallest number of bunches she can buy of each type of flower so that she has the, the same number of flowers? 
All right, How so much have... will it cost her to buy the flowers before tax? Show your mathematical thinking. Wow. Oh, okay. Was this one of the tier tasks? Yeah. Okay. Is this tier two or tier three or tier it, 25? It sounds like a tier 25, <laughs> I think. Tier two. <laughs> so, um, this was the one that we were looking at yes earlier today. And uh, what? First of all, let me make sure I copied it down right or uh, down correctly. We had nine sunflowers, and then how many orchids? Um, the orchids were um, six orchids. Okay. And so, uh, eleven twenty-five per bunch, and then how, what was the price for the orchids? Seventeen dollars. Okay. And. Was that nine sunflowers per bunch? Is that correct? Uh-huh. Okay. Are we trying to find the least common multiple or the greatest common factor? The least common multiple. Okay. So um, if we were to list these out, what do we need to do? Um, we would need to find the multiples of nine and six. Okay. Possibly. Now, what I'm wondering is, if we were to figure out the greatest common factor, that allows us, wasn't, wasn't it asking us about the greatest number of flowers within each bunch? Look back to the, um, what it was asking about with the nine sunflowers and the six orchids. Yeah. What did it say at the end of that question? Did it say anything about... Um, Read me the end of that question one more time. Um, what is the smallest number of bunches she can buy for, of each type of flower? So that she has the names of flowers. How much will it cost her to buy the flowers before tax? Okay. So if we're looking for the, uh, the least common multiple, that would put us up even further. I'm thinking if we were to come up with the factor that goes inside of those numbers, you probably can tell me what number what factor can go into both six and nine? Three. Three, nice. okay. So if we have three sunflowers and three orchids within all of those bunches, that GCF is going to be our three. Now, how many sunflowers can we make, how many of those uh, Bouquets of flowers can we make with those nine sunflowers if there are three uh, sunflowers in each one of those uh, in those bouquets? If there is nine sunflowers and three is our GCF, we can make three. Perfect. So nice. we go back. We take our GCF and divide it into the number of sunflowers that we have, and we have nine divided by three. That means that we can have three bouquets. There's a Q in there, isn't there? Yes. And two L's in balloon. Two L's in balloon. All right, he knew it. <laughs> two L's in balloon. So, nine sunflowers, six orchids. Our GCF is three. That means that our greatest common factor being three, that's going to be, that's also going to be the same number that we use for six. That means that with our orchids, we can make two bouquets with the orchids. Now. What do you think we need to do with those two numbers and our prices, Kara? Um, multiply them. There you go. So now all you have to do is take those bouquets, multiply it by how much it costs, and you got your answer. That brings into what another thing that we're working on for tomorrow's test is multiplying whole numbers times decimals. There's our sunflower amount of $11.25 by three. And $17 times those two bouquets will give us our amount for both the sunflowers and for the orchids. Once you multiply them, what do you think we're going to have to do? We're going to have to um, add them together. You got it. Very good. All right, I'll let you take care of it from there. Or can you, you know what, before you add them up, let's multiply them out. What's five times three, Kara? Fifteen. Perfect. Can we regroup that? See how fast she answered that? Two, well, it's her math teacher. I mean, I can't yeah. expect. Two times three. Good we, job, Mr. Cook. I appreciate it. Two times three plus one? Seven. Good. One times three? Three. 
and another one times three. And we know that equation, 3,375, is the same as 1,125 times three. We need an answer that's 100 less. Um, so you have to scoop the decimal point. We do. And we're left with how much for the sunflowers? $30.75. Perfect. And then 17 times 2, we have 14. And 1 times 2 plus 1 is 3. What wow. did I just do? That was fancy. That was. I don't even know how I did that. So 17 times 2, what do you have for that one, Kara? Uh, $34. Perfect. $34. Now, do I put the 34 above the 75 or above the 33? Above the 33. You got it. Good job. Very nice. I'll let you take care of that on the rest of it, okay? Yeah, we're running out of space okay. up here. I know, we're running out of space, Woo! but you know what? Come to me tomorrow and tell me what you got, okay? Okay. All Very right, nice. thank you so much for calling in, Kara. And you know what? We do have a special prize that I'll bring to you tomorrow. Let's see what it is. All right, here you go, Ms. Hebo. Oh, it's going to be the fidget spinner. Oh, spinner. Oh, just, I love fidget spinners, Kara. You know how much I love fidget spinners. <laughs> Kara, you, here's your new homework assignment. You have to make sure you use your fidget spinner every day in math class with Mr. Cook. Huh? Yep. All right, Kara. All right, Kara, thanks for coming. All right, I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, and good luck with your test tomorrow. Although yeah, I don't think she needs any luck. I think she's going to ace she, that thing. She was doing really well. Yeah, yeah. She's, she knows what Mr. she's Cook, doing. Mr. Cook, you give really long homework problems. Yeah, seriously. Mr. That Cook. was just one problem, Woo! actually. So, <laughs> nice. I hope I told her to, how to do it right, though. That was good. It worked. I hope I told her how to do it right. You did. Anyway, uh, well, you know, we do use math in so many ways in life, uh, but not just in the math class. Let's head out to the streets of BCPS to see who Maria is talking to now. Oh, I love Maria. Math on the street. Hola, yo soy Maria, and I love math. Here at BCPS, we use math every day, everywhere, and in every office and school. Come with me, I'll show you how. Today, I'm here with Kimberly Panchagar, an art teacher at Stemmers Run Middle School. Miss Panchagar, is math really a part of art? Hello, Maria. Thanks for coming to Summer's Run. And it sure is. I'm going to show you an example. <gasps> Great. Let's hear it. Maria, do you know what primary colors are? Mmm, not really. Primary colors are the three main colors on the color wheel, red, blue, and yellow, that all of the other colors come from. By mixing primary colors together, we get brand new colors, like purple, green, and orange. In fact, artist Pablo Picasso had three different recipes for mixing colors. Let's look at how he would make the color green. Okay. Here's where the math comes in. So recipe one says that one part of blue with three parts of yellow, or in other words, one to three. Recipe two says four parts of blue with eight parts of yellow, or four to eight. This is also one half. And recipe three is three parts of blue with five parts of yellow, three to five. The more blue paint we have in our ratio determines how dark the green paint is. And this works for all colors. Oh, wow, I see. So that's just one example of how math and art work together. Ratios, colors, wow, I've learned so much. I love art. Thanks for stopping by, Maria, and please come back again. Okay, adios. Ooh. Math on the street. I love that thing, man. It's so cool. Awesome sauce. Thanks, you guys Maria. ready for another car? We are, absolutely. Ariel, are you there? No, you think me. Oh, there's Ariel. Thank you. Yes. Ariel, how you doing? Oh. <laughs> Welcome to Math Homework Helpers. What's your math problem for us today, kiddo? Ariel, you there? Uh oh. I think we might have lost Ariel. Technical Ariel. difficulties. Let's go over. Oh. We lost her. Ariel, if you want to call back, call back, kiddo. But in the meantime, let's move over to Hampton Elementary School. And Tessa, Tessa, are you there? Yes. How's it going? Good. Awesome. I love Hampton. Are you a dolphin? Isn't Hampton the dolphins? Yes. Cool. Ooh, that's a fun mascot. Yeah, that's a great mascot. So, so Tessa. Tessa. What's the purpose? 
Oh, get it? I got it, Mr. Cook. I got it. That was a good one. <laughs> that was very nice. I don't have many of them. But yeah, awesome. but sometimes you just got to go fishing for some of these uh, puns. You know what I mean? All right, so Tessa, what is your question for us today? Um, Mr. Matthew bought oh. 63 mm. microscope lenses for the biology lab. There are seven lenses in each package. How many packages did he buy? All right. So he has 63, and there's seven in each package. What operation do you think we're going to do here? Operation? Oh, my goodness. I didn't realize the problem was that, in that bad of a shape. Yeah. Oh, boy. They're numbers. They're not shapes, man. <laughs> oh. Maybe sevens? So we want to see what about the sevens? How many sevens go into what number? 36. Oh, I mean... Uh, 63. 63. All right. So what, op what order of operations do we have to do to do that? Um, add sevens, groups of sevens. I like that. Let's we use that do method. That. So let's start with seven plus seven. What's seven plus seven? Fourteen. 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 All right. So that's two sevens, right? Well, that's not 63. So let's add another seven. Twenty-one. All right. Wow, that was but fast. That, Good that's Tessa. not 63 either. All right. How about another 7? 28. 28. All right. 28 I, is great, but it ain't 63. There you go. And what about 28 plus 7? 35. Getting closer. We still got more. Yep. So let's take that 35 plus another 7. Um. 42. Okay. Say 42? Yep. All right. Now what? Um, 45. And another 7 we've got? Um, what number were we at? 42. 42 plus 7. I lost count, too. I know. 42 plus 7 is 48. Close. So close. Really close. 49. 2 plus 9. Yep, 2 plus 7 is 9. You got it. Oh, we've got more. What about 49 plus 7? Um, We're getting closer. 54. Oh, almost. Almost. So add 1 to 49 to make 50, and then it means you got 6 more to go, so you got 56. All right, let's keep going. I have a feeling we're close. What's 56 plus 7? Um, 63. There we go. Is, wow. 63. Ding, 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 ding. I liked uh, how that was like that climactic moment there. We're all waiting. <laughs> the anticipation. All right. So let's count our sevens. I've got one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, and nine. So I have nine seven. So what does that mean? What's our question asking us again? It's asking us how many um, how many microscope lenses did Mr. Matthew buy for sixty three um, lenses? Yeah. So we've got nine. Pops? So it's. A total of nine packs of lenses. lenses. Does that make sense for you, kiddo? Yes. All right, Tessa. Perfect. Well, you know what else makes sense to us? Dropping a puck on the wall. Mr. Cook, would Let's you do, do it, it, man? All right. We're coming towards the spinner. Oh, All spin right. Spin it again. I haven't tried it out yet. Oh, it works. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> I, you, are you taking it for a spin? <laughs> hey. I got it. All righty. All right, Kiddo, thank you so much, Tessa, for calling in. Go Dolphins and call back soon. All right, guys, you ready for another caller? Of Absolutely. Oh, uh, we have the amazing Jacqueline from Feather Bed Lane Elementary School. Oh, and the spinner again. That was interesting. That was for me. I won that one. Oh, you, congratulations, Mr. Yeah, Cook. I appreciate it. I'm excited about it. Hey, Jacqueline, are you there? there? Hello? Oh, sorry, there she is. Off, hey. Hello? Hello? How you Hi. doing, Jacqueline? Good. Awesome. So do you have a question for us? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Tell us what it is. All right. So the question is, Yeah. 
Miss White took her class on a field trip. Okay. There is two buses. Two buses. Okay. She has to take three classes on two buses. Is that legal? How many people, are, how can we divide um, the students into equal buses? Got it. How many students, do we know how many students are? Do we know are? how many students are in that class? There are, oh, no, there we well, go. it doesn't there. give us how many students. Got it. So we've got two, plus, two buses and we've got to fit three classes on those two buses. Do we know anything other information? Um, oh, uh, all right. Oh, and the next problem, it also said there is three more teachers going. What I'm thinking is, I'm wondering if we need to, so if, you, if there are no numbers of the classes, there's no, no number of students, correct? It doesn't say anything about the number of students in each class? Uh, each, each class, class A has 24 students. Cool. Keep. Class B? Class B has 18 students. Oh. And class, I guess class it's C, right? C has 34 students. Ooh. Jeez. My goodness. That's a big class. I would like to speak to the administration, please. Right. So uh, this is, sounds like a multi-step equation here, multi-steps that we need to do. Uh, what is our first step in solving this equation here? So the first step is add your one. And I know that 4 plus 4 is 8. Ooh. So 8 plus 8 is 16. Very good, Jack. Good job. Then what do we do? We can't have 16. We can't have two numbers in the one place. So nope. we're going to carry the one to the tenth place. All right. Nice. Keep, keep going. What else? We got one uh, plus and then two. I know that mm, three plus one is four. Good. And I know that two plus one is three. Okay. So four plus three is 70. Perfect. I mean seven. Yeah, very but good. But you're right, it's in the tens place, so it is 70 for a total of 76. Awesome. So are we done, Mr. Cook? Uh, I'm pretty sure, I mean, that's gonna be a crammed bus if that's yep. on one we'll bus. Get all 76 kids on one bus, and the other bus will just follow in case the first bus breaks down. Exactly. Sounds good. <laughs> Wait a minute, we can't stop there. No, I don't think so. Uh, Jacqueline, what do we have to do from there? So now, um, this is an even number, which means we are gonna be able to divide the three classes equally. Perfect. And so we have 76 for the total students aboard two different buses. How many kids can go on each bus? Or are we, was that, it didn't, did it want to know that? Or did it only want to know if it can divide equally, evenly? I think we, I think we do need to solve for that. Divide equally. Yeah. Okay, so let's divide equally then. Let's take it one step further. We're gonna take 76 and we're gonna divide it amongst two different buses. And so we can actually break this apart. We can take 70 and, and divide it by two to get to see what our partial quotient is. And then we can divide six by two. And let's do that now. What If I took 70 and I broke it in half, what would I get as a final quotient? So half of 70. 40 and 30? Close, close. I agree that three is gonna be or six divided by two. Um, if it was 80 divided by two, you'd be right with 40, but we're at 70. So it's gotta be smaller than 40. Think of a number that's less than 40, but not quite down to 30, because it's not 60 divided by two. What two. falls right in the middle? 20 and 60? Um, we're going the wrong direction. Let's try to come back to it. Let's see, if we took 70, how about this? Let's say we broke it into 60 divided by two, 
and 10 divided by 2. There we go. What's 60 divided by 2? How many times can 2 go into 60? And you can just think how many times does 2 Three? go into 6? Yeah, into perfect. There you go. Perfect. How many times can 2 go into 10? 5. 5. Uh, 2. 5. So 5. 5. You got yeah, it. You so go. 2 goes into 10 5 times. Now this right here, these two partial quotients, is going to give us our answer for 70 divided by 2. What's 30 plus 5? 35. There you, got you go. It. And 35 is half of 70. So, yep, going back to our original partial quotient, how we broke it up. 70 divided by 2 is 35. 6 divided by 2 is 3. What do you think we need to do with 35 and 3, similar to what we did down here when we added 30 and 5? We, we need to add the add rate. Uh, You're right. We need to add them. We need to add 35 plus 33. But yeah. 35 plus 3. Good. You got it. Can you tell me what 35 plus 3 is? Yes. 38. All right. So 30, or 76 divided by 2 is 38 students, so that means that we're going to put 38 students where? Where should we in put? In one bus. Perfect. And we're going to put it on each bus because... Plural students, Mr. Cook. Thank you. <laughs> Two L's in Two balloon. L's in balloon. I, I, I knew it was coming. So we have 38 students on each bus, making it where we can have two buses taking all three classes, and they'll get to the field trip on get to the field trip safely. Um, yeah. I think nice. there's, is there one S in bus or two S's? Because that just does not look right. It is I, one S. It is one S. I thought so. Now, if so. you were to say buses, you would have to put two S's. Yeah, and then another there's two S's, S's in buses, years. right? But that's what I'm saying. Is it two buses? Two buses. Yeah, yes. That's right. Am I right? Okay. Yeah. It just looks weird. Maybe it's just because I wrote it's it in. It's just the two L's we need to remember. It's the two, two L's. Two S's, two, two L's. L's. All right, you're right. Okay. Just checking. Well, you know I, think that, I think that deserves account. a prize, right? It does. Yeah. It deserves a big prize because he deals with Max. Yes. <laughs> and oh, the oh, puzzle! puzzle. Very cool. Puzzle! Yeah. yeah! He knew what he wanted. He knew what he wanted. Awesome. <laughs> well, thank you so much for calling in, kiddo. Thank you. You're welcome. Man, oh, man. Yeah. Well, before we take our next caller, we're going to head out to one of our very own Baltimore County Public Schools and check in for a Mighty Math Minute. Nice. Hi, I'm Isabella, and this is your Mighty Math Minute. Today I'm going to show you how to do a grouping strategy. So I'm going to put parentheses here and here by 2 and 3, and that equals 6. And then 6 times 4 equals 24. And then 3 times 4 equals 12. And then 12 times 2 equals 24. And that's the grouping strategy. That was awesome. Other kids had to do math. It's awesome. It is awesome. All right, you guys ready for one more caller today? Absolutely. Dylan from Franklin Elementary School, you there? Yes. How's it going? Hi. Hi, so, Dylan. Dylan, what is your math question for us today, bud? 32 times 5. Oh, 32 Ooh. times 5. Cool beans. No, actually 15. Oh, 15? 15. Yeah, oh, digits 15. by two digits. That just got a lot harder. That did yeah. get a lot harder. All right, so what do we do there, Miss Evel? Well, I'm going to line them up over top of each other because I always think that m math problems are easier when there's one over top of the other. I agree. Standard algorithm, yeah. <sighs> so, Dylan, what are we going to multiply first? Can I multiply 32 times 15 all together? 
Or do I like to pick one number first? Ten. We, uh, Dylan, at Franklin, do you, in third grade, do you, you, do you like to use the area model, partial products, or the standard algorithm? Well, what would you recommend, Mr. Cook, just because we're short on time? Uh, for short on time, I'd say the area model or the, uh, uh, let's do the standard algorithm. All right. You know what, do the standard algorithm. All I right. think that's perfect. So let's just work through that. All right. Let's start with the 5 times 2, and 5 times 2 is 10. And just like with our addition problems earlier, we're going to carry over that 1. And then 5 times 3 is 15, plus my 1 is 16. You got it so far, Dylan? Yeah. All right. All right. And then since I have multiplied my tens here now, I need to add a zero. So now we'll multiply our one times two, or our tens value times two, and I get two. And then one times three is three. Are we done? Almost. Oh. Once we have our two numbers, we have to add them together. Dylan, can you add them up for us? So yeah. zero plus zero is? Zero plus zero is zero. Zero. All right, what about six plus two? Yeah. Eight. Perfect. Nice. And then one plus three. Four. Four. Very good. All right. So it looks like our final answer is. Dylan, read it for us. What is it? 480. Yeah. Perfect. Good job, Dylan. All right, Dylan. Well, you're going to be our last call of the day, so we're going to drop a really cool puck for you. Here it is, Mr. Cook. Here's the really cool puck coming at you. Coming down to the puzzle. A puzzle. You can I didn't turn it any way today. you want. Can I get the drum roll, please? <laughs> there you go. All right, buddy. Well, thank you so much for calling. He seems fun. Thank you. You're welcome. Call again next week. Okay. Cool. All right, kids. That's all the time we have for this episode. So be sure to check in next week. And remember, we do re-air each episode, so be sure to watch. We look forward to seeing everybody again next time. Only, Only here, here on BCCS TV. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.